Marie, this is Ms. Novak. She's from Chicago. Marie is our receptionist. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I'll get your tickets. Thank you. Very familiar to me, Marie. Have we met before? I don't think so, no. Well, I never forget a face. I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I don't look familiar to you. I'm sorry, no. I know. We met in Chicago. You were a waitress in a restaurant near the Art Institute. I've never been to Chicago. Oh. Have you ever driven a taxi in Egypt? No. Oh, you were the pilot on a small airplane in China. You flew me over the Great Wall. No. Have you ever gone snorkeling in Australia? No. Driven a bus in Peru? Ms. Novak, I'm quite sure we've never met before. I came here only a year ago from Paris. Paris? Well, my sister Katerina lived there for a year. Katerina? Katerina Novak? Yes. She lived with me. Of course, you were in all the pictures she sent home. <laughs> what a coincidence. You see, I never forget a face. <laughs> I have your tickets. Oh, thank you. Did you know that Marie knows my sister, Katerina? Really? It's a small world, isn't it? So, are you going sightseeing before you leave? No, I'm going back to the hotel to read. What? You're visiting our great city and you're not even going to see it? I've come here once a month for eight years. I've seen it all before. I'm sure I can think of something you haven't seen. I think you're wrong. Have you visited the Riley Museum of Art? Twenty times. Hmm. Have you ever been to the top of the Olsen Building? Just last month. Have you eaten at Andre's Cafe? Twice. Ever been to Cold Beach? Yes. <laughs> Seen the City Opera? Yes. <laughs> Toured the Japanese Gardens? Yes. You can't have done everything in this city. I'm afraid it's true. Have you ever visited the Museum of Cheese? There's no Museum of Cheese. Aha. Uh -huh. It is really amazing. Everyone goes there. I can't believe you haven't been there yet. <laughs> Marie, could you call the Museum of Cheese and reserve tickets for Ms. Novak and me? You're not serious. I am. It's at the corner of 7th and Oak. I'll see you there at 4. Okay. I'll see you there. Thank you. Goodbye, Marie. Say hello to Katrina for me. Goodbye. Bye. Mr. Evans, is there really a museum of cheese at 7th and Oak? <laughs> it's a wonderful little cheese shop. They have every kind of cheese. Some of it's very old. So, yes, I'd say it's a museum of cheese. <laughs> There's no back in London. Give us another one, Marie. We're running out of time. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't find a parking space. Have you been here long? Since yesterday. <laughs> but it's no problem. The waiter brought us food, and, and we slept on the floor. Have you chosen a movie yet? We've been trying. Unfortunately, these guys have seen almost everything. We like the movies. What about the action film, The Last Train to Hong Kong? Where is this train going? <laughs> we, me, rather not go. We're going to Hong Kong, aren't we? rather stay here and fight the hundred men. No, but I've always wanted to see Hong Kong. Look up. We've been doing this for a half hour. That 
looks a little too violent for me. What about on the bridge? I hear it's great. You're late, Frederick. I'm sorry. And I've waited for you for so long. I got stuck in traffic. For two years? Very romantic. How about the horror movie, The Hand? I've just returned from the train station. Have you seen anything lately? No. We should go inside. Good idea. I don't want to see that terrible hand. Do you really think there's a hand out there that... Uh, oh. Stop doing that right now, and the movie tickets are my treat. Deal! <laughs> I'm not buying you popcorn. Oh, come on. So, what do you want to do? Mm. Hey, isn't that David Doolittle, the famous British actor? You're right, it is. Let's go say hi. No! <laughs> what are you doing? Aren't you David Doolittle? Well, yes, I am. Wow. We really like your movies. Thank you. You're great. Thank you very much. Remember that movie where you were that dancer? What was that called? The Dancer. That's it. That was unforgettable. I love that one where you're the chef. What's that one called? Dr. Falk. <laughs> that was so funny. Unforgettable, man. Thank you. My favorite is the one where you're that robot musician. Name. DD42. Oh, I just saw that movie again last week. That's a great movie. What's that called? Songs of Love. Yeah, man, that's unforgettable. <laughs> Thanks. You know what? I have to go soon and I should finish my lunch. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. It was nice to meet you. Well, you too. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Isn't that what you say at the end of that movie where you're the pilot? Uh, pie in the sky. Yeah, that was unforgettable, man. Unforgettable. <laughs> Would you guys care to join me? <gasps> What's your favorite? Hello, top-notch travel. Um, one moment, please. Hello, top-notch. Uh, just a moment, please. <laughs> top-notch. Uh, hold, please. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Beatty. Cheryl? I'm afraid Cheryl's not here. You're not satisfied with your hotel. No bellman. I'm sorry. Cheryl will call you back. Okay. Goodbye. Hello? Uh, yes, hello, Mr. Rashid. Uh, Cheryl's not here. Can I take a message? You want a cheaper hotel in Budapest? A hotel without breakfast is okay. Very good. I'll give Cheryl your message. Goodbye. Hello? Oh, hi, Ms. Novak. She'll be right back. Is there a message? Can your cat stay with you at your hotel in Rio? and you'd like to reserve a king-size bed. I'll ask her to check and call you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you're back. I have three messages for you. Let's see. Mrs. Beatty wants a cheaper cat. <laughs> Mr. Rashid isn't satisfied with his breakfast. <laughs> and... Ms. Novak thinks the bellman needs a king-sized bed. <laughs> um, 
They'll explain it all to you. What? I'd like to speak to a guest, Mrs. Beatty, in room 514. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. This is Cheryl from Top Notch. How's Los Angeles? Well, the hotel isn't very nice, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay? You sound tired. My room is on the fifth floor. I had to walk up with my luggage. There's no bellman? No elevator? No. And I wanted a non-smoking room with a king-size bed. And I requested that for you. Well, they gave me a smoking room with a twin-size bed. It's all they have. I'd better check your reservation. What hotel are you at? The Candle Inn, I think. And another thing, they didn't make up the room. The towels are dirty. Did you call housekeeping? They're not answering. And there are all these students everywhere. I thought you said that movie stars stay at this hotel. Mrs. Beatty, your reservation is for the Chandler Inn. You're in the wrong hotel. The Chandler Inn is a much nicer hotel. Oh. Well, I'd better call a taxi. How will you get your bags to the front desk? I'm sure I can find a student to help. I'll say I'm a movie star. I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Goodbye. Hello? Paul, what's happened to you? I had an accident with the van. Oh no, are you okay? I'm fine. I was wearing my seatbelt. No one was hurt, but I think we're gonna need a new van. Well, what happened? I was driving on 6th Street, and there were a lot of fish on the road. A lot of what? Fish. <laughs> Why were there fish in the road? I don't know. Anyway, I tried to turn, but I had a problem with the steering wheel. The steering wheel broke? No. It came off. <laughs> so I drove over the fish. The fish made the road slippery, so I tried to stop. I hit a parked car. Oh, no. I'm not finished. The car behind me was tailgating, so he hit me. A car on the opposite side of the road hit a stop sign. The stop sign fell and smashed my hood. Oh, no. Then, worst of all, when I got out to look at the damage, a piano fell on the van. <laughs> what? Where did it come from? I don't know. Uh, but the van does not look good. The bumpers are damaged. So is the hood. The doors won't open. The windows won't close. The engine's not working. The, the headlights are smashed. The horn won't honk. And it smells like fish. <laughs> are there any parts that are okay? The steering wheel still looks good. <laughs> Great. All we need is a van to go with it. <laughs> We're going to need a van this afternoon. You're taking the tourist from Chile to the museum. I'll call the rental company. Are you hungry? Yeah. Want some of my fish sandwich? <laughs> oh, sorry. Guess not. <laughs> Hi. Is this auto rent? I need a rental car. A van. Do you rent vans? That's great. 
We'll need to pick it up right away. We'll probably need it for two weeks. Could we return it on the 15th of the month? Great. Four-wheel drive. I could take the group from France to the mountains. Do you have any four-wheel drive vans? They don't have four-wheel drive vans. How about a luxury van with DVD player and stereo? Do you have any luxury vans with DVD and stereo? Stereo, yes. DVD, no. How about a convertible van? <laughs> yes, don't. Do you have any convertible vans? <laughs> what color do you want? Blue. No. Red. No. Green. White will be fine. <laughs> Insurance. Yes, we'd like insurance. Lots and lots of insurance, please. I think everything's ready. Why don't we sit down? This smells so wonderful. What are we having to eat? There's roast chicken, baked potatoes, salad, broccoli with garlic, red cabbage, and rice. Help yourself, everyone. Wow. That's a lot of vegetables. <laughs> vegetables are very healthy for you. Mr. Evans, would you like some chicken? Just a little, thank you. I'm not a big chicken eater. How about some potatoes? I'm sorry. I'm avoiding potatoes. <laughs> some broccoli? I'll pass. I'm afraid it doesn't agree with me. Cabbage. Sorry. I I'm allergic. <laughs> Mr. Evans, I'm so sorry. There's very little here for you to eat. I'm crazy about rice. <laughs> well, then, pass the rice, please. Cheryl, this tastes so delicious. Bob, you're not eating very much tonight. Don't you like the food? Bob's on a diet. I'm trying to lose weight. Good for you, Bob. I'm on a diet, too. <laughs> Why are you on a diet? You're so skinny. I'm trying to gain weight. <laughs> I can't stand it. Cheryl, that was fantastic. The rice was terrific. Cookies, anyone? Yes. One, please. I'll take two, thanks. Or three. <laughs> Do you eat sweets, Mr. Evans? I used to, but I can't anymore. <laughs> no dessert for you, Bob? Not on his diet. But weren't you eating cookies today at work? I was eating carrots. 
Didn't I see you snacking on candy this afternoon? That was an apple. What about that ice cream you ate yesterday? Fruit salad. My mistake. These cookies are terrific. If you like the cookies, you'll love this cake. Oh. Would you eat some strawberries, Mr. Evans? Strawberries are my passion. Really? I'd eat strawberries on anything. <laughs> Cereal, pasta, even rice. <laughs> I'm crazy about chocolate cake. I can gain weight with every bite. <laughs> I think I'll have a cookie. Bob, could you pass the... Oh. Where'd they go? I have one. I have four. I have none. What do you think about this color? What is that color? It's tomato red. How does this color make you feel? Happy. Sad. Tired. I don't feel like looking at any more colors. <laughs> Quit complaining. How about this one? Happy. <laughs> Sad. Awful. I can't stand looking at it. Do you plan to do this all night? This one. Be sure to look carefully. Sad. Happy. <laughs> very, very nervous. Nervous about what? I'm nervous you're going to paint the whole wall that color. It's my apartment, Bob. Yeah, but we come here a lot. Can we discuss leaving the walls just like this? I'm tired of looking at yellow walls. Fine. Can you at least choose a color we'll all be excited about? There is no color you all like. Paul's feeling happy about everything. <laughs> Marie's feeling sad about everything. And you just seem to hate color, don't you, Bob? I love color. Just not... Those colors. Okay, then why don't you find a color that everybody likes? What do you think of this color? I like it. I like it too, actually. I love it. I'm not painting the walls the same color as my sofa. The whole room would be green. You could change the color of the sofa. To what? The color of the walls would be a nice color. Marie, you've been so quiet. Are you okay? I'm just a little down in the dumps. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been arguing about colors and you're feeling blue. Hmm. Blue. <laughs> What's wrong, Marie? Don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I've just been feeling out of sorts. Don't worry. I can help. Dr. Cheer is here. Dr. Who? At school, people call me Dr. Cheer. Because I'm always happy and I enjoy cheering people up. You know, that's true. You're always cheering me up. How do you do that? I practice laughing every day. Laughing at what? Nothing. <laughs> I just choose to laugh. You just decide to laugh? 
I can't do that. It's not in my nature. How do you know? Just try it. Let me hear you laugh. Ha ha. Louder. Ha ha. Come on, keep laughing. <laughs> You're right. It's not your personality. What now, Dr. Cheer? Chocolate? Yes! Works every time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. You remember Ms. Novak? Hello. Hello. Hi. Ms. Novak has just opened an art gallery here. I've asked her to find some pieces to decorate our office. She's brought some things for us to look at today. I have a painting, a sculpture, and a photograph that I think you'll like. Here's the painting. <laughs> This was painted by a Russian artist that I really like. It's called Sun on the Water. The artist was inspired by looking at the sea. What do you think? I think I could do that. Oh. It's fantastic. How interesting. It's very blue. Yes. It's gorgeous. Oh, good. Here's the sculpture. It was made by a British sculptor. It's called City of Gold. Is it really gold? No, it's made of wood. It was painted gold. What do you think? It's cool. Mr. Evans, I think it would look good in your office. I think I prefer the painting. I'm fascinated by it. Good. And here's the photograph. It's called Winter. It was photographed in Paris. There's nothing there. It's a photograph of snow in a park. Maybe I should buy them all. What do you think? Great! Hey, look. I'm an artist. Here's my latest work. It's called Office Wall. It was inspired by looking at the walls of the office. Are you a photographer? Yes. Uh, well, no. I, I take a lot of pictures. Oh. Hmm. Well, I'm not so crazy about that one. <laughs> but I do like what you've done here. Oh, I'm very moved by it, actually. It's a Fascinating mixture of Eastern and Western traditions. You have talent. I do. I think I could sell this. Really? It's very good. I'm crazy about photography. Well, do you have any more of your work here? Uh, no. Here's my card. Why don't you bring me some pieces on Friday? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are we going to put this thing? Hang it by my desk. Really? Yeah. As an artist, I'm... Really starting to like it. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the most interesting works I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> 
Bob, can you help me with something? Sure. I'm trying to print a file, but the printer won't work. Push the green button on the printer. Why? To turn it on. It won't print unless it's on. <laughs> oh, right. Silly me. Thank you. Hey, Bob. My laptop crashed, and I can't get it to do anything. I, I type on the keyboard, and nothing happens. Stick this here. Why? To restart the computer. You sure? Okay, thanks. Bob, I could use a hand with something. What is it? Somebody sent me an email, but I think it has a virus in it. Don't open the attachment. Click on the no virus icon on the toolbar. Why? To clean the computer and stop the virus. Thanks. <laughs> Bob, can I ask you another question? I'm sorry, but I can't get any work done with all these questions. Please, I have some very important stuff I need to finish right now. Game over. Game over. Very important stuff. Game over. Game over. How can I help you? Hey, Mr. Evans? Yes? You asked me to build a website for the company? Oh, yes. How's it coming along? Well, sir, I, I think I need some new technology. What do you need? A new scanner. What's that? It's a scanner, sir, but it's not nearly as good as this one. This one would give us much better photos. Okay. And a digital camera would be good. What's that? It's not a digital camera, sir. It won't take pictures as easily as this one. Okay. And also a new laptop. <laughs> it's not as fast as this one. I see. Anything else? A new DVD drive. And I could also use a new joystick. A joystick? Isn't that for computer games? Well, I don't really need the joystick. What's all this going to cost me? What? Well, actually, we could do without the DVD drive. <laughs> and the laptop. And the camera. And the scanner. Great. Do you have a favorite genre of movie? I love drama. I love comedy. But my, my favorite is drama. Do you think there's too much violence in movies? I think sometimes some films portray violence a little too graphically. But I feel that um, if it helps the plot along um, and there's sort of a point to the violence, then it's okay. But unnecessary violence really turns me off. So do you choose to go see movies if you know they're going to be violent? I usually tend to see films that get good reviews or are by uh, filmmakers whom I admire. I don't think violence would really, you know, sway me one way or the other. Do you ever go to see violent movies yourself? Yes, I've seen violent movies, um, thrillers and, and movies of that nature. Can violent movies be dangerous? I think people are dangerous. I don't know that movies are dangerous. Should children be allowed to see violent movies? No, I don't think children need to be watching violent movies, no. What's your feeling about violence? Is it harmful, particularly to children? Um, it, it, I think violence is um, harmful, um, especially in movies. movies. Children of certain ages should not see uh, violent movies because they're a little more influential and um, don't have the uh, judgment skills that adults do.
Could you tell me um, some of the things that are important to you in a hotel, such as um, a fitness center or a pool, a gift shop, a restaurant, a business center? I look more for location in a hotel than anything else. Anything else. So I want it to be close and convenient to whatever I'm doing in town. If I'm there to enjoy myself, uh, for example, then I want to be near the beach. Uh, so um, location is more important to me than anything else. I, I don't pay too much attention to the she hotel. She likes uh, one bed. <laughs> she doesn't like twin beds. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of hotels. If, they ha if they're comfortable, I'm happy with it. When you stay in a hotel, do you use room service? No, I try not to use room service because I like to get out and see a little bit of the town or the city that I'm staying in. Thinking about a really good hotel experience, could you tell me about that? Really what makes a hotel special is the, are the people who work there. If people there are very nice and friendly and people say good morning and know you by name and they, they, when you come back to the hotel they greet you and they ask you how your day was and they just make the difference. If, if when I stayed in a hotel I had, um, I had a bellman bring me flowers that were left over and put them in my room. And those are those little touches that I think make your experience or you stay in a hotel much more pleasant than when you just stay anywhere else. How about a worst hotel experience? Well, um, I have had experiences more, on more than one occasion where I've been in a room next to people that are rather noisy. And so that can be, that can be a distraction, especially when you've got to be up early in the morning. Who are you most like in terms of personality? My mother. And why do you say that? Outgoing. She smiles a lot. Do you have any brothers or sisters? One brother, two, three sisters. Okay, and then how are you different? Is, say, one more extroverted than the other or more introverted? Uh, well, I'm quiet, calm. I don't really get excited over things. and. Just take it easy. I don't let things bother me a lot. While my sisters, they will get excited and get upset, and uh, so I'm not like that. Okay, how about first children? Do you think that they have certain traits that they share? Well, I think my brother, being the oldest and the only boy, was allowed to get away with things a lot more than my sister and I. And what I mean by that is, um, as the oldest and as a boy, he was able to go to concerts at an earlier age than my sister or I. Um, he kind of got out of household duties uh, that my sister and I had because he was babysitting us. And how about if you're the last in a big family? Do you think that uh, you get special benefits from that? <laughs> yeah, you get close. What about birth order? Do you think that makes a difference who's the oldest and who's the youngest? Um, I don't think so. Not important. I don't think it's important. It's just the personality. If you got a bill in a restaurant that was obviously wrong, what would you do? I would tell the waitress and ask her if everything's okay. I think they should tell the waiter. And what should they tell them? Um, that um, they're given too much change or they're undercharged. How about if a person's shopping in a department store and uh, an expensive piece of clothing has a tag on it that's obviously wrong, it's priced too low. Uh, would that, should that person tell the cashier or just pay for it? I usually ask. That's me though. <laughs> Well, I, I would go to the cashier, or I think everybody should go to the cashier at least and ask, is that right? And if he says it's right, then at least you tried it. And then suppose you found some cash on the street, not in a wallet, just some cash lying on the street. What would you do with it? I'd pick it up and put it in my pocket. <laughs> I usually do not pick up money if a very poor person is around, because I think a poor person needs it more than I do. So I'd leave it lying there. So are the three situations the restaurant, the department store, and the cash on the street the same or different? I think each one is different. Why? Um, you make judgments all the time and not everything is equal.